Okay, so um, our high performance glider, you know, has been in the T2 had been in production for you know for several years, um, and we had um, we had two sizes, a 144 and a 154, and these two sizes were appropriate for the wide widest you know cross section of, of hang glider pilots from say 100 and you know 45 pounds to you know 250 pounds. Um, um, but there are a small contingent of women and light pilots who have never been well served by, you know, appropriately sized gliders. Um, and they tend to be very vocal, perhaps because, you know, they don't have anything to fly that fits them. They're either they're usually flying gliders that aren't aren't well suited for them. And and the reason for that is is twofold. Um, one, it's it's very hard to justify the development and the production of a, a glider for you know very limited you know market. Um, and two, it's particularly hard to get small gliders to fly appropriately, uh, to fly well. And it's because um, all of the, um, all of the, 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 the characteristics in the airframe and stuff don't scale well. So when you make something smaller, we have to use the same components to make that glider, same size tubing, the same sailcloth. We can't scale the flexibility. Um, and the other problem, of course, is the person who's doing the flight development isn't appropriately sized for the glider. So it, it's just for all these reasons, it's always historically been very difficult to get small gliders to fly well. So the T2 was released in 2004, and I don't know when it, when it was, but let's just say, you know, 2007 or so, I, I remember a couple of women pilots um, coming up to me and pleading about getting a small size T2. And I just told them, I said, well, if you can convince Mike to make one, I'll make it. And of course, I, I knew how that was going to go. Because, <laughs> you know, Mike, um, Mike doesn't like new sizes of gliders. Um, and, I, I, you know, I don't know why. It's just maybe he's, um, you know, just happy with the gliders we have. I, you know, sometimes think that Mike would be perfectly happy flying our original Alphas that we made in 1978. It was a great flying glider. I mean, I, I'd still like flying it, but you know, Mike is generally not driven to, um, I've never heard Mike request a new size model, and usually he's arguing against it because, and, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. It, 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 it takes a lot of resource and a lot of money and um, to develop these new, new gliders, and sometimes, you know, they don't work out as well as you might, you know, hope that they do. Anyway, so, you know, fast forward a few more years. We didn't produce, you know, Mike wasn't receptive to those two women pilot who were trying to convince him to make a small T2, and that was the end of that. Um, but a few years later, I was still getting requests for a small glider. Um, and I eventually conceded um, Richard Wabeck, who's a French pilot, um, asked me to make a pilot for his, uh, his wife, who's an extraordinarily good pilot too. And I eventually conceded and said, well, I'll make one prototype. If it flies good, we'll have a model. If it doesn't fly good, that's the end of, you know, the small glider T2 development. I'm not going to make any more. So I'm going to take one shot at it and that's it. Um, so that was, um, and I committed to him and I did that when I told him that I knew that I was committing, so I was kind of like digging my own hole. So you know, I'd committed to make one prototype, and I didn't tell Mike. Um, in fact, Mike usually finds out about new glider developments when he sees the entry in the production log for some, because we assign serial numbers to every glider included prototypes, and so and he schedules the production. So usually he finds about about a new model or size by looking at the production schedule. So that was the start of the T2C-136. And you know, the first prototype did fly quite well. So that was the start of it.